Hello, my name is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, here to provide your update for July 25th, 2020. Sorry, it's a little bit later today. I've been on the phone and I've been admiring today's sunset. It's not quite finished yet. Anyway, we have had some developments today worth highlighting, such as the Americas um, dealing with our first Atlantic hurricane of the season, Hurricane Hannah's, um, starting to, um, the edges of, of which are starting to touch the Texas Gulf Coast. Maybe you've seen some of the pictures or videos out there. I'll note that it's Hannah, H-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Um, personally, I have a sister named Hannah in Texas, and she spells it the right way, H-A-N-N-A-H. -N -N -A -H. Uh, in addition to weathering the storm, she's going to have to put up with a lot of punchlines for a little while. In other news, um, rumblings coming out of the White House um, indicate that Republicans are going to be rolling out a new COVID-19 aid package early next week, uh, possibly Monday. Um, the Treasury Secretary, Stephen Muchin, um, is previewing some of the details. Um, looks like that it's going to still include an extension of uh, unemployment benefit, though it won't be at the additional $600 that it's weekly, that it's been previously. Um, the Treasury Secretary also said to expect another round of $1,200 stimulus checks um, starting to come out in August. In other news, it was announced that Regis Philbin um, died Friday night at the age of 88. Um, he was just a month short of his 89th birthday. I remember my mom being a big Regis and Kathy Lee fan, and then a big Regis and um, Kelly Ripa fan. And uh, sh I have in my closet a Who Wants to Be a Millionaire t-shirt that she bought me. And I always appreciated his... Um, sense of humor, his um, kind of self-defacing way. And the, there are a few uh, particularly television personalities out there that they're not necessarily feeling close family, but they kind of feel kind of like an extended cousin, great, great uncle that it's always sad to see their passing and to know that there's just a little bit less um, color out there. One of the things I wanted to share with you today is um, I was reading an article from The Atlantic talking about um, vaccines and how we remain optimistic that uh, there will be a COVID-19 vaccine, um, having it, with it being noted that it's not, um, there, there are some diseases that we've, we've known for a long time and we're still tr figuring out how to tackle. And in this case, we certainly have mobilized like I don't think we really have any other cases before. Uh, the article notes that we have, um, from the time of the discovery, which was only not even a full year ago, to today, we have more than 165 candidate vaccines, including 27 that are already in human trials. Um, in the United States, as in many places, it's in most places, there are um, at least three phases um, that specifically look at safety, um, effectiveness and dosing, and also to see if it's, and, um, and the third phase is how good does it work in a huge group of people. Um, and right now, um, a, a number of companies are Playing their cards close to the chest. Don't want to get people excited if, if it won't pan out, but we know of at least six that are already in phase three trials, which will take several more months by themselves. Um, according to this article, we're um, in America, we're almost five months into the pandemic and probably at least another five months away from a safe and effective vaccine. Um, assuming best case scenarios for the current clinical trials and work. 
and that's great news. I know a lot of people are, are hanging on to their concert tickets for all the stuff that's been pushed back. Um, some to this year, some already to 2021. I know at least one event that um, this cruise is being pushed to, uh, the, the next in-person cruise will be set for 2022. It's, it's bright moments like these you wanna hang on to, though you also want to keep your expectations reasonable and, and be realistic about what's coming. Because one other thing to note is that even uh, once the announcement comes out that yes, we have a virus, or excuse me, we do have a virus, we know that, it sucks. Yes, we have a vaccine. In America alone, we're, we're a population of about 328 million. Um, that's a lot of work to be done. And one of the things that this article notes is that there are a number of things that are kind of static when it comes to what companies make, what they have on hand, um, and how much they have in reserve for um, spikes. And this just even when it comes down to the small glass tubes um, for syringes or stockpile of needles, that's the type of thing that typically the demand for that's fairly constant. I mean, ticks up a little bit during flu season, but it's one of those things we're seeing demand like we've really never seen before. And so there will be competition for that. And good news, the United States has been putting money and it's putting instead of money out there to help crank those out. But it will still take um, additional time to just put the logistics together for delivery. And there's also the possibility that um, there, are, there are some vaccines out there that they take more than one shot. We're not quite sure what it's going to be in this case. It might take, uh, there are some cases where your initial um, shot is to prime the system, get it ready, and then after a little bit of time, after your system started to adapt to it, knows what to do when it enters the system, you get a stronger dose, which is intended to further strengthen your system. And there are even some cases that require more than that. That's something that remains to be seen. It's something we remain hopeful about, but we shouldn't think that a um, announcement that a vaccine um, is in hand on Friday means that everything goes back to normal on Monday. This article notes that the amount of time, it's between, na between now and when the vaccine um, is in hand and, and the time between when the vaccine is in hand and when it gets to um, kind of th this part of the country might be even longer than what we've already experienced in this, uh, in this pandemic, um, probably longer. And just because we know that a certain number of people are, have already stated that they have um, questions about getting a vaccine, um, or at least indi ind indicated that they'd be inclined to wait a little bit for different reasons. I know I've had discussions with people that um, if, I had to, if I knew that me delaying getting the vaccine means that it would get in the hands of a person who was a higher risk, I'd be willing to um, defer for that. I know some other people just have concerns about um, side effects and those should be considered. Um, pretty much any medical treatment, any medicine we have out there, there will be a certain, it's you give it to enough people, there will be side effects. And it's um, very important that um, our government, uh, these companies are honest about what we face. That's, um, we want people to make educated guesses on the risks they have. And with this in mind that we're still trying, trying to be positive because we have reason to be. The other thing that I would suggest today is to not let your, um, when you, it's, if you're feeling down, if you're having a case of blues, especially one that you can't quite shake, to reach out to people and to, um, and even if you don't have the blues, keep trying to connect with people. I had a very welcome phone call today from a friend that I haven't heard from a while. I've sent some unanswered texts and had left some messages, but this is the first time we actually got to um, 
talk about um, how things stood lately. And that was really nice. And we all know how important it is to have those little moments. They're best in person. There, we haven't come up with a way to replicate that across the distances. We're still very fortunate that we have options that a decade or two ago, we couldn't have done that. We couldn't have had face-to-face -face communication, at least not outside of the movie theater. We have that today. We should try to take advantage of it where we can. Or there are still places like our, um, our locals, um, um, nursing homes where they have ways for us to be able to have in-person um, meetings. You usually have to call ahead. There are usually extra safety protocols that you have in place. Or if you're like me and your family is a little bit farther stretched across the country, use Zoom, use phone calls, use text messaging. One of the things I was reminded of today is that um, I shouldn't stop texting some people just because they haven't responded yet. Hopefully in time, I'll be able to make connections with those. And if I grow lax and uh, forget people myself, I hope that they'll reach out to me too. We've got a ways to go, but I've always found that journeys are less troublesome and more enjoyable when it's, um, when it's done as a group. Yeah, you can do it alone. I just don't think that's the best method for most people. Find what works for you and be willing to keep calling other people, keep texting. This is Caleb Smith with the Rocket Miner newspaper, wishing you a good day and a safe tomorrow.